Netflix added 8.3 million streaming users despite raising prices. Original shows and movies like Stranger Things and Bright helps the streaming service. Gene Monster is with us, Loop Ventures Managing Director. Do you think it's possible, now that Netflix is worth more than $100 billion, that somebody would just buy them outright? Uh, Stuart, before we, we get into that, let me just take a quick step back and, and put some perspective around the significance of what's going on today with Netflix. As you mentioned, they raised price in October by 15%. They beat the street estimates for sub-ads by 30%. And so this is, uh, something big is going on here. Content is king. You're in good shape, Stuart, because content's important. <laughs> and, uh, but yet this company here at $110 billion market cap, for someone to step in and buy it, I think it's unlikely. I'm going to put a, a, a small wager here that it's not going to be Apple. I mean, people kind of kick that around. Uh, but I think at uh, $108 billion, uh, Netflix is going to be the acquirer. So it really is a success story as opposed to a potential takeover story. Because as you suggest, I mean, they did so well, and they've still got a lot of, a lot of folks that they could sign up. They've got 110 million, I think, uh, subscribers, registered subscribers. Worldwide, they've still got a big market to go at. So you're saying they're the king of streaming, they're going to stay the king of streaming, and they're going to advance on their own. Yeah, this is probably maybe uh, the next HBO or bigger than the next HBO. Uh, as you mentioned, 110 million subs. Uh, analysts out there more broadly think that it's going to get to about 170 million by 2020. The U.S. penetration of uh, Netflix in home is 52 percent of the households have it. Now, there's a lot of password sharing that goes on, and so uh, the actual usage is actually probably closer to 65 percent. But globally, we're talking sub 5 percent. And so that's the real kicker to the story here is seeing that's the escape velocity of them creating more content that's localized for these other uh, countries. That's just incredible, isn't it? 250 bucks on, on Netflix. Now, this one for you. Uh, I'm told that it's disappointing iPhone 10 sales that has led Apple possibly to slow down production of those iPhone 10s. Is that accurate? I mean, the first thought that came to my head is uh, fake news uh, hits the tech space. I, I think iPhone 10 is doing exceptionally well. Apple tends to uh, press into when things are going uh, well. You probably saw a lot of advertising around the iPhone 10, uh, around the, the, the last the championship NFL weekend there. But the bottom line is that iPhone 10 sales are fine, and I think we, we're going to hear a lot more on, on uh, February 1st when they report their quarter. But we think that iPhone 10, here's the takeaway, is that this is a much more expensive phone than a typical iPhone, and I think that this is going to be the catalyst for them having higher ASPs than the streets expecting for fiscal 18. So my money clearly is on that the iPhone 10 is going to do well. That's just, uh, Gene, we love having you on the show because you sort of nail down some of the stuff that's out there. You're telling us Netflix is not a takeover target, they're going it alone. And you're telling us that the iPhone 10 is just a fine phone and doing very well indeed. Thank you very much.